This man, George Pedley, has been haunted for nearly 30 years by something that he saw here. It happened deep in these isolated reed beds in Australia's tropical northeast. George believes he had a fleeting glimpse of a UFO taking off. The reed beds rang with an unearthly sound. The experience left a mark on him and on the landscape. At first, he thought the hissing sound was coming from his tractor. I remember standing over there beside the tractor, looking in, and trying to convince myself that I didn't see it. But, uh, well, it looked like a flying saucer object. Uh, couldn't see it for very long. It just disappeared. Moments later, a mat of reeds several feet thick shot to the surface of the lagoon. It looked like a gigantic nest. The reeds were flattened into a clockwise swirl 30 feet across. George called in his neighbour. Albert Panisi grows sugarcane on this land. He too was amazed by the circle, especially its strength. It was two feet thick and easily supported his weight. I think it could hold at least 10 or 12 men. It's George and I discussing the reeds and how they were turned into a pontoon. They were very thick, the reeds, where you couldn't, go, you couldn't walk through them anyway. To this day, both George and Albert remain convinced that extraterrestrials visited Tully and left the evidence in the reeds. But what George saw uh, a UFO take off from the lagoon, so I suspected it was a UFO that made the circles. And uh, then you'd hear people saying, well, uh, it could be caused by uh, helicopters upside down, uh, spoon bills tramping around and making a circle, or alligators mating, grabbing each other's tails and, and swinging around. Well, they're, they're some, <laughs> some of the questions that were put to me, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 In the middle of town, sit down more than between here, this way I'm totally in out of place. And I uh, lost my mother when I was nine years old and we came to Tully. I've been in Tully ever since uh, 1929 30. The only time I've ever been in Tully is four years in the army. I've got a wife, deceased. Of uh, three boys and a daughter. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about uh, what happened in the what she was doing a year ago, probably 1966. It was on the. Uh, 9th of January, Friday morning, I was going to the, to the, to the beach to do a bit of renovation of a beach house, and it was very heavy fog, and the dog went mad outside. Oh, I said, well, he goes back again. No, I was going right down the headland, no, I had to get it away because I had to go to the beach. And uh, I came back at 4 o'clock. The, the, the friend of mine who used to go through my property, had a banana property right side of me. He's sitting on the steps. I said, Hello, George, how are you? And I, he said, Not bad, but he said, Don't laugh. I said, Why? I said, don't laugh. He said, I want to tell you something. I said, now, don't laugh. A flying saucer landed in your beginning. I said, Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, uh, He said, uh, I was Going along the headland and, and uh, all of a sudden here they go, and a big hissing noise. And I said, hello, what back guy got with the tractor? He's <laughs> hissing and he looked up and he saw this spaceship 
about 15 meters up and up, going toward the tree, turned on its side and disappeared like that. He said, I thought it was a dream. He came up toward the lagoon and the water was squirming. He looked at the water. Oh, I'm going to have a cup of tea. They went back to his camp, had a cup of tea and came back. And that's when he saw the pontoon came up. Put the carpet on there. That means looking at the wood. Okay, yeah. Well, there's some of the advice that I spoke during the time that I was looking at the the uh, outside of the uh, flying saucer. Yes, thanks for that. That's the, that's the, <coughs> the nest that came up after we came back. It's a clockwise and 10 meters in diameter and 5 feet of water. Uh, so, anyway, we started talking about it and, uh, and uh, we went back home. George went home, he said, no, I'm not coming down here anymore. He said, I'm, I'm really, really frightened now. He said, that <laughs> no, I said, no, all right. So I thought about myself, well, I'm going to give the local priest a call. And it's fine the walls. He asked me, I'll look here. I said, uh, what are you doing this afternoon? He said, you can do that half hour school. No, nothing at all. I said, uh, I went back to my place, I wanted to show you something and uh, have tea with us. Oh, yes, yeah. she said, I've got nothing on, I've got nothing on, so, uh, okay, he came around, I took him down to the gym on the back of the youth, and I said, now, have a look at that. Oh, oh, mm. Mm. Well, I said, the man saw the time cut, and I said, what do you make of it? He was saying, the method of that. Okay. Okay. That's the more George pointed to, to, now the spaceship took up about 15 meters above the trees, and then there was a spot of water. You see, class, it was a dream. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> These, these photos were taken uh, about three days after the drug And I have to tell you that uh, when, the, when the news got out that this, this uh, UFO rally in my place, and they were coming from the left to the right, I would say a thousand cars for the day, no couple of cars. No, no uh, can I go up, can I go through your coffee, have a little bit of nothing in my food? You come past my place and say, hey! What have you been going like this again? Get to run with something. And uh, anyway, uh, they, they were the genuine fellas that usually come and ask, and one of them may ask more questions about what really happened. Uh, now, uh, the police got on up and they called me north. So that one could go into the weekend or out of the weekend. And it's very important, and they had a phone call for two days. And uh, in fact, I did not know after they had the federal police uh, check in with me to see if I knew something about this. I said, uh, uh, so I said to the side, well, it's good, I don't know nothing about it. I said, that's the good sort of flying source of many buttons that it's trying to disappear. And I said, there's the mark from there. And uh, we just sort of left it like that. But uh, I, after this happened, I sort of had to have to stop it because uh, they know what the human beings are like. They come along, beer bottles, tin cans, packets of rubbish, and he would keep rubbish around the place. And guys, they did them. Uh, these uh, creatures were taken by the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, we would like, would I would go back into the lagoon and I don't have a few photos on me now. I went underneath a uh, 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 circle 
and the bear is not there at the floor. And 30 feet down about the, the depth of the rubber is grass, and we carry around to the, 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 the grass was growing and then between seven and eight feet long. And the massive grass that was flat walking into it, into it. Now this grass here beside here has saw grass, and then saw grass was very, very um, standing because it becomes just like a sort of razor. And uh, <coughs> I swam on the leaf, but it was very dangerous because if I didn't know how to get back, I'd get stuck in there and I couldn't get out. But there's very delight there out there. So the, a machine that made that must have some power. But there's the advantage clockwise. All the big circle is clockwise. Now, the next couple of days, we're going to start the uh, alien. Uh, there's like, some showing the George, uh, that's the size of the, the reed and the lagoon. But uh, the, in between that, the people coming there, they were saying that that circle could have been done by green bulls. Oh, uh, 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 that's the dog that, that, that went down the headland. Now, I wanted to go down there, but I had no time to go down. And the, that's what George and I were talking about what really happened down the lagoon. Uh, okay, thank you. Now, there were the smaller bits, and there, there were anti clockwise. <laughs> The big ones were clockwise, just a bit of the 3.5 meters wide, they get between 9 and half 10 feet, and not that feet. I guess the other people would drift away. And all tunnel of all the sightings we down here were 22 markings of the smaller ones. And the smaller ones were all the same size as the other ones. And the smaller ones were big machine. Uh, people were very interested in it. I just put them now. Uh, I met Stan City. He went out to the holiday in the block that he kind of came to the I said, Yes, come and uh, take the kitchen and check it in. And check it in for a couple of days. And uh, investigation. Samples of water taken from the nest and reeds from the nest and around the other side of the lagoon, samples of water and reeds marked to go down to the bottom when you get back to Brisbane. It's very popular. And uh, the bottom, he ran that bottom and said that he didn't know how that, there's no disease in the, in the grass and he doesn't know how it was. After three days, it turned out the color of a corn crop, nice and yellow. And, and, uh, and, and uh, some of the reeds that we taken were still grown bits of shoots. <coughs> Back to the small list again. <coughs> and then Stan said to me that, uh, oh, Albert, he said, this is a metal landing, he said, will you? Give me a call. Well, I don't know if I go around here. I just did uh, Woman's Day report and she was speaking out there. She was speaking out there. She was speaking out there. She was the out the the, uh, the markings were when the two of them came one on top of the other. In fact, I asked George when, when he saw this machine, uh, he took off, he said, I can't tell you much about it, Albert, but he said it was a silvery grey, 
He said, but I think it could have been between seven and nine feet in height. He said, it happened that fast that uh, I thought it was a dream. He said, he didn't, couldn't, couldn't make out what it was. There's a recorder there. You could go back one one night and have a look at it. Look at the stars and said, one like the back again. <laughs> Have a cup of tea there. Talk about that. This is talking to us, asking us questions about what really happened. At least there it says when my tea you're born when they were young, and it's been like a little one had a plane, so we got him up in the plane to go around all around the lagoon and all around the countryside to see. What do you call them? In fact, by fight some more parking somewhere because between, between where the night place was and back to Nilly Car was all, all uh, jungle. It's all uh, stops, stops, all the way down, back to about 40 kilometres. Where are we going? This one here. We're all sitting with us. That's not one of the machines. Okay. Now, but Stan said that uh, there were no marking come down. Will you please bring me up? He said, uh, I see what he can do. I need to so I need to get ready. And I rang him up and I said, Stan, I was there. I said, your friends are back again and I'd like to talk to you. Oh, okay. He said, he said I'll ring you back if I get a plane. And he did. Will I pick him up here? He said, I said, on the way up. <coughs> At the time that I was talking to him, that uh, he, he made this monitor. That monitor and then made the movie camera up there with a film of light from my hand, and then the battery was hooked up. But that's, if that's on the table at home, you show what I have. But in, 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 back in the room, I had it hidden, made probably, but it was facing across whatever, whatever, whatever it was. Shooting through. Anyway, uh, he came up at the first landing. He left, came up and said, See, I'd like, I wish I could have, have, see another one before I go back. Well, he was just unlucky because a week after it came, the other, it must have been the same ship man and just about down in the same place. And, uh, <coughs> and it started, uh, the rainy season was starting, and uh, I said, Well, I'll have to go down. And get that leaving camera, but I didn't know that that second landing was there. And uh, I would have gone down and saw the landing, but uh, that, that, that uh, monitor had a trigger off the camera. Something's happened. So it was right anyway, I had to tell where the floods were coming up. And uh, took the camera back, put it back to the friend of mine that had it. And, uh, he had to, uh, he sent uh, the film, yeah, the code actually, the, the code film, he couldn't he said, it's better. Yeah, and then about three weeks after, he came back to me and said, well, here's, here's the container, just open it up and have a look inside, see what's inside. Inside the container of the boat, this is how we received your container. Thank you. Thank you look back up. So I think Stan C is folded up. Uh, I think he had an idea that uh, it, it was taken by ACL or something, something that was mistaken. So I don't know what we're talking about. Before. That's what we need to do. Let's look at the same one on. Okay. Now, uh, that, that's where he said that would be the last Martin that came there. Now, I kept it very quiet after the 1966. You just have to keep it quiet because if anything happened, it's more of an investigation that we can push because the people are coming at it. It's being negative. So there was a. Uh, there was a the Martin claims that 66 was the first one, 69 the second, 72 first, 
75, the next one, and 80. I've got 87. Yeah. They were fixed by, and that one you're all thinking about. If they're any important, I would have been it out. And I saw the things in the smaller ones. That's in the 70 parts. And the bigger one is the smaller ones. Now, just, just uh, the one again. And there's some good doors were here. There's something about doors as well. Uh, maybe, not quite 70, 75. Now, the father ahead of me back that way, and my review and do a review. The father is with them, uh, and uh, Murray, Charlie Murray's review, the father review and that review. We did that uh, three kilometers in addition to each other. We did all the straight lines, but we had the map and we did the map. We just went on the way that path of all the straight lines. That's what we did. Small one, yeah, and he puts it in anti clockwise. You can see it for the anti clockwise. And the last one's stand alive, a lot of the machine are clockwise and anti clockwise, and they're in the mother somehow. Like a ball. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, that's what Yeah, okay. Well, the last thing is that it's Now, I'm what would you people think about it? I don't think there's too many unbelievers in this whole album. I think most people here think they are real. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because, uh, Barking's there. That's another one. <laughs> Just 
And that, and that was happening on, on four different occasions. Months after the first land, and uh, a couple of chappies I knew, they, they said we didn't want it sailing, Albert, because uh, we, we weren't quite, we didn't like the sailing about what we saw. But uh, we were out on the, on the, on the, on the hull, on the, on the, on the wharf of the hull fishing. Of course, we had to be. We went down to be. One of the this light came from the temple he from the from the from the ocean came straight straight to the to the wharf and they pulled up. They just they saw it coming and they both dumped him in the water. <laughs> and they said it stopped in front of them, they went back and and disappeared again. They said, We can't find anybody in here because we were from bed, they reckon we were paying enough. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. And then another chap, he had been about two years after, he said, uh, he'd been in town drinking for about 10 o'clock, the pub's closed, I right know. He said, uh, then we was going home, and had to go around the mountains on the rough road, because he wanted to go on the main road, because the priest would be there to pick him up. <laughs> so he's driving along, and all of a sudden it's right in front of the car, just above the car. So he got these people, he turned, turned around and went back this other way. Question and the light was coming that way. Um, you really got a fright, he said. He said, I got a fright. I turned about and it was as fast as I can back home. And when he got home, he was puffing. He said, What what? He said, I don't know. He said, I think it's a flying saucer in front of me. <laughs> so these things have been kept quiet. A lot of things kept quiet. People don't say anything because they reckon they're, they're a bit bat or drinking or something like that. <laughs> now, I don't drink. Now, this, this, uh, like I said, changed my life quite a bit because. I got interested, I was interested in the beginning of the, I used to buy the cartoons when I was going to go to school with that Flash Gordon, back in the 1920s, 30s, Flash Gordon. And they were just uh, spaceships that were showing me the stars. And uh, that sort of changed my, changed my life because I used to go down, right when they landed, uh, see the marking of uh, 66 and 72 and 75, Come a certain time between January and before the end of March. That's the wet season. Why? I don't know. But out there, you can forget about going to the lagoon or watching the game, but I used to watch the lagoon day after day after day because walking very far from home, half a mile, a bit, 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 I've been coming every three years in the same spot. Do you have any theories why, George? Do you have any theories as to why they came back year after year? feeling that someday something would happen. And what is interesting to know and to be there and see what's happening. I'm, I'm still I'm still hoping today before I leave this earth of what really what what, what they really are, where they come from, who are they and what they're what they're doing. But why at my place after all those years. I put you George on that bit, Albert. Um, yeah, um, the, the other theory I have is that maybe if the big ones are caused by crocodiles mating, the small ones could be gay crocodiles going down the wall. <laughs> 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 well, that's interesting. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's 
does anybody uh, does anybody have any questions for uh, Alan? Few comments I should make. I remember Stan Sears saying that the um, film was played in the presence of witnesses in the Tully Post Office. And when they got the, the thing back, the stamps were for the weight of a full container with the film. The stamps did not agree with the weight of an empty container. Yeah. Um, and six years later, when I got to Tully, and due to unexpected circumstances, I had to spend a few days with. A man at Tully, and it turned out that he knew a, a, a young woman on a nearby property to Albert Panissi who saw the saucer go overhead. Now, if you're home groups, it's not important to have two independent witnesses. And uh, so, six, six years, we'd only had that one witness, but six years later, I found there was a second independent witness, and um, yeah, it, it all looks quite genuine. You assured me the woman's dead, but she wants to remain anonymous. Um, so I, I lost. I didn't get to meet it, but, but uh, we have got two independent witnesses. Um, another thing is, his son took me down and showed, he pointed to the branch on the tree over the of the lagoon, and he said that branch has only just grown back six years after it happened. But years later, when I went to Wilbur with um, Paul Phillips and another man who was a cameraman for Channel Nine, and he saw, saw a, a UFO once, and the police came and knocked on his door and done he quiet about it. Um, but at Will Bilgen there was a, a circle of, perhaps on the New South Wales coast, there was a circle of grass, and the, and the grass, we were there five minutes later, five, five months later, and the way the grass was just not growing five months later, they've been thinking if we knew how to do this, we'd never need to mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when I compare that with the branch of the that wouldn't grow back for six years, it, it's... It gives the impression that there's something about the ionisation and the force field of the craft that not only kills everything, but it, it destroys it so completely that it can't grow for years afterwards. And that's one of the um, distinctions between them and, and crop circles. That about 1974, I saw the, our first crop circles, and I guess the crop circles here about 20 miles northeast of here near Sango. And none of us had heard of crop circles, but I could tell they weren't flying sorts of landing sites because they were just so different. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, people and some researchers um, seem to be interested in what's wrong with the brain of the person who looks at these things, like was it on alcohol or whiskey or, <laughs> or whatever. Um, but when I visited Albert Panissi, one, one thing I noticed was that <laughs> he was the sugar he put in his tea, um, which is sugar they get, um, some people can get direct, the farmers get direct from the mill, that hasn't got the nutrition removed from it. So if he was feeding his brain nutrition, and everyone else uses white sugar that's got the nutrition for their brain removed from it. And later, when, but years later, before I saw the, what looks like a probable pattern, I saw it was Alex Derbro on the granite mountain near Stancor had a sighting and when I visited him I discovered he was an organic farmer. He was very careful not to poison brains. And with um, Frank Howard's brother's property about 110 kilometres west of here, there were landings on his property and we eventually found he was an aerial ambulance man who had gone to extraordinary lengths to save the first person who was ever died, saved from a type and snake bite. And there's this pattern of, it's not what's wrong with their brains, there's something about their brains that, that, that's right with their brains and working better than other people's brains that makes that difference. But it, it's, it's something that the average psychiatrist is trained not to recognise and they're not taught about this sort of thing. Um, and, and, and there's few people are, are waking up or seeing what's really going on, that there's something that's right with their brains that's the real issue and it's not something that's wrong with their brains with a few very rare exceptions. Uh, and one researcher told me that there was a question asked in British Parliament about what so many British scientists were doing in the jungle of North Queensland, and the answer was that the germ warfare research station at Tully was one of three in the world. There was one in England, which I guess is important now, but I don't know, and uh, I think one in South America. And there seems to be a pattern of UFOs watching 
Firstly, everything that can destroy most life on the planet, and also watching what can save life on the planet. And just as they watch the, the nuclear incidents, they could be watching germ warfare for the same reasons as they watch nuclear incidents. It's something that can, I think, cause a massive loss of um, life on the planet. But whether they're actually watching their germ warfare research station and tell you or not, I, I don't really know. Okay, sorry to cut in there, but um, we've really got uh, questions for Albert now. I'll start at the back and come forward, so make sure you put your hands up. Um, hello, um, thanks Albert, wonderful talk. Uh, my name's Lorraine. Um, I'm, just, I'm just a bit interested about, um, you mentioned a Catholic priest had a, had, a look, had a look at Ness, and he didn't say anything more. Did that change? Just to get through a second, what I was very hard to do, so I have to explain to what the question was. Albert, Albert, I'll just run a question through the mic. The, you mentioned a, a priest. Can you hear me, Albert? Can you hear me? You mentioned a priest. It's all up on the base, You mentioned a priest. Yeah. That priest came out and had a look. Yeah. Is there any other comment made? No, no. Never said anything else. Never said anything else. He's a more senior now. But, uh, I had uh, a few big books given to me from Stern Sears to about that. And one of those books ended up in the Cathedral of Kings. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, now we've got another question right up the back. I might lose some weight, do not <laughs> With the, uh, the, the sources landing in the swamp, there have been other cases in the world, like in, especially in one in case in Canada where they were landing on the dams and what they were doing, they were refueling. Like we put petrol on the cars, they seem to be run on water. There's some of said they uh, water break into hydrogen. And there's been cases in America, so obviously while they maybe were keeping an eye on the uh, German Warfare Centre up that way, they were coming back and refueling their craft in the swamps. Does Albert believe? They were taking water. I don't know. 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 Around the circles, around the end of the small water insects were all dead. And that was because the line was being caught in the heat of the machine. And uh, we're going back to 1969. And, uh, I did a good inspection around the lagoon, and the branch was not walking, were not walking about eight feet in length of a uh, sort of cork with a string of softwood, and all along the side of the, the trees were scorched. Scorched. No way in the world any fire would be there in, in, in January because of the wet seasons there. I'm saying that in uh, '69, when I uh, got up in the morning, uh, at uh, two o'clock in the morning, uh, they had the, they had a little put to the downside of the vehicle in the morning. I straight down on the vehicle with a big light. You think of it with uh, a bush fire, but no one's going to suffer in a bush fire. And, uh, I looked at it and I said, no, I can't go down there because they have these people coming up big as as uh, duck eggs. So I said, I go down in the morning and that's when I found them the first time down there. So there's a big bright light down there. Okay. okay. Right into the microphone. Can you hear me now? <laughs> thank, thank you, Albert. I've followed very carefully everything that you've said over the years and, re and I've read it all and I've never stopped being interested in this topic. 
your contribution has really been one not to UFO research Queensland, but to UFO research worldwide. It's one of the best sightings. However, there's always been in my mind one small mystery, and that is, why did those aquatic plants die so quickly? If you pull aquatic plants up out of the ground, out of the water, and leave them floating on the surface, they'll float there for months before they discolour. Yet these ones discolored quickly. The answer, I think, may have come from an article I read not so long ago. An incident in England, a UFO was also on a lagoon, and when the guys came back after the UFO had left, it was covered in ice. Ice would kill off plants very quickly. So maybe it was the cooling effect from the UFO, not the heating, that could have done that. It's just a thought. It certainly would explain a lot of a lot of things. As for why they keep coming back, well, either you do have very clean water and they did want some, but more than likely, the World Health Organization issued a statement after the event, of course, that milk in Queensland was unfit for human consumption for many years on account of the atomic tests in the Pacific. So maybe the UFOs were out there taking regular samples and yours was a nice landing spot, nice and quiet, with no guns or nasties. So who knows? Thank you. What do you think about that theory, Albert? Uh, no, I would say that anyone would like to get a compression of this part of the face to face I've got an answer to it. So that's all muffled and I've got a big answer on my head with a lot of wood. Recently, someone has uh, said that these circles were formed in England in water with reeds, but they, it was covered in ice. And it was the ice that killed the aquatic plants really quickly. Because normally when you pull a, a plant like that out of the water and just let it float, it doesn't discover straight away. The, the, the theory is that maybe it was ice. Oh. <laughs> anyway, there's an interesting one. They're not aquatic plants. They're normal grasses that get flooded. Yes, right. So, it, it's, uh, the grasses are natural grasses, the lagoon fills up, then it dries out, and they, they just stay there whether there's water there or not. Just an uh, interesting point. Something to here. Yeah. A, a, you mentioned federal police. Today we know that federal police only knew in the 40s everything about UFOs. My question, can he recall what kind of questions the federal police asked him? I've never ever saw me. I've never spoken to me. The police sergeant that I knew in town was telling me that the security had an eye on me for a for two days. Now, we were hiding and we were looking, I don't know if he was inside the strong mosquitoes are chasing for a start. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that seen me is that we work all morning, we come back at night, then we are not in the field. So, that might as well come and have a yarn with us. Have a tea or something, start talking about something. But they thought I might have known something. I don't know. It's a mystery. Everything's a mystery down there. Like all, those, all those sightings. You'd wonder, and I go down, how different out of the moonlight, just because they didn't go by because they are tight pants and things like that. I mean, I was in big black tight pants. And uh, I'd stay there for hours, around, so something like that. And that's when the, when the, the smaller surface is around, 22 of them.
I was just saying that um, back in 1966, our property was um, was was a, a carton into a rainforest. There was about 10,000 acres of rainforest and swampland behind us. So yeah, that's, that's, yeah, they were put up for pain, but now it's all been opened up for expansion. So the only way in was past our, past our house. No, no one's actually gone through it. Not a machine or a boat chance. And to fly in. Yeah, uh, I just want to personally thank Albert for really giving a great presentation on this because this Tully experience is really of worldwide importance to the UFO subject and just something that's really fascinated me over the years that I've spoken to Albert a, a bit about it in the past is um, maybe you might like to comment about it was this business of having a dream about. Uh, uh, something happening or a flying saucer landing on the property before it actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. But before the, before the, I don't know how to say anything, because but before the, the 66 one landed, but the door was saw, about three or four days before I was contemplating, yes, that very far, it would be the this side twice the this and this. This year, maybe three. And uh, I pulled up halfway down and patted him, and I said to myself, What end of my mind is your father's flying source? I said, Now, if a flying source are landed there, and it took me, how would I let my family know? So then I, I, I sort of uh, I stopped the track of the only thing I could say was on, on, the, on the mud guards, I, I, I put down flying saucer. <laughs> So, so, so I'm gone, the fact is there, I'm gone. So I could see that it was full of dust, the vanguard full of dust, flying saucer. And, and that's it, it was the like a dream. Like, what happened to me, I don't know. I don't know. Another question. Hey, uh, Albert Gary is my name. I, I've got an interesting question to ask, and I'll just relate what happened. Uh, a, a, someone from Tully contacted me. Uh, a couple of years ago that, that uh, knows George and Albert and he had been speaking to George and he told me that he told me and, and I've got it written down that when George first saw the uh, flying saucer, the UFO he was driving the tractor and smoking a pipe and he always carried this pipe with him and he saw the UFO hovering or right out of the swamp and he, he began to turn off the, the vehicle but he was putting it, he put it into neutral I think, I think he said or was attempting to and the next thing he knew he was standing beside the, the, the tractor and the vehicle wasn't operating and so then he climbed onto the tractor and then he noticed that his pipe was missing and he never found his pipe again. Now this was a contact, I, I've got his name, but uh, I won't mention it because I couldn't tell if it's, he's making it up or it's real, but that's an interesting aspect. That is fascinating. See what Dad says about that. <laughs> He was on the track. Now, yeah, but the first thing that we did was a hissing, big hissing noise on the bench. He thought his, his time, big time was gone. His, his, his time was probably going to fight. They were, they were really bored, yeah, they were. And uh, <laughs> that's when he, he looked up to the side and he was going to happen. The suggestion here was that that the uh, when he first saw it, he was on the tractor, yeah. but then when he came out, he was actually off the tractor and he couldn't find his pipe. Uh, he thought he would. <laughs> Did he smoke a pipe? Yeah, that's that's uh, it Looks like we're really uh, we're really swamping yeah, around in that yeah, one. It doesn't really gel together. But, um, does anyone else have any more questions? My dinner guest, you might start there. Well, ladies. <laughs>
I just have to read it all once if I could. I, I was wondering if there was any relation or what the relationship was of the small nest or markings to the big one. Uh, also, was there any scientific test done on the soil then or later on? And um, I noticed in one of the um, things, thank you, yes, that um, there, there was one caption or, or one story that was uh, headed. Uh, footsteps among the banana trees. I'm just wondering if that was the the markings or was it something else? <laughs> that was that hard question, right? Yeah, we've had a parallel or something, but uh, you just imagine that, say, a couple of hundred people standing all around here, but, but uh, there was a fellow named Ronnie Cleveland, and he was in the and he was very interested in the UFOs too. And he was the one who was picking up the, the, the markings. Now, we know our animals here, like uh, wallabies, pigs, cattle, uh, they all have markings on them. Now, what are the markings of the animals that are out there? Now, what is the animal that you see that has the markings on them? Well, the big one is the uh, wallaby, and the big one is the cattle, and the big one is the cattle, and the big one is the 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 part that went down into the, 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 any other animals that have the feet be like that, you, 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 you can tell the difference in the animal feet. But that one bit when I can't talk about it, that's down there because the outline wasn't there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The only question is made of the, on the, on the, on the reeds and the water. And, uh, this part is with the, the machine landing. And the landing was the bottom. Uh, he, yeah, he, was, he wasn't sure what caused it. He could think of something. He wanted more information, but... <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the more landings uh, over, over the period of 1966, the, the main big one was, uh, if you imagine a horseshoe, horseshoe lagoon, imagine a horseshoe, uh, the, um, the main big one was dead centre of the, of the actual horseshoe, the smaller ones were sprinklings on either side, but no, they were random, there was, there was no dramatic, no set pattern. And I think, in, from memory now, I was I was nine years old at, at this stage, but um, uh, I think two of the smaller ones may have clipped over each other. Okay. Okay. Oh, here we go. One more question. <laughs> Alec, uh, two quick questions. Do you still live in the same property? And uh, two, was there any sightings in 2005, which would be three years? I've still got the same property, but I'm living in town with one of my sons uh, living on the property. And he's, he's a follower off where I'm gone. He, he's checks now, day after day. Because we're up, because it's now three years since we're just wondering whether or not you've had another visitation or are you expecting one? I probably should have my young brother here who's, who, who's, um, is living on the farm at present. I think that I was trying to get some uh, more photos of the, of the Bush Lagoon as it stands today. Now, I said there was 10,000 acres of, of swamp and rainforest around our property back in 66. Today, all that has been cleared and, and opened up for um, sugar cane production. So we've left our little bush in the rainforest as it, as it stands. But um, uh, by nature of drains and opening up 
things have changed vastly. So uh, we do still still go down to do, uh, my government shown still does go down in January to March to uh, do daily inspection when when the floods are not on. Uh, just, just well, when the floods are on, but if it's a major flood, it's it's uh, about 12 foot of water over the whole whole area down there. So I wouldn't expect Shane to go down and um, crocodile infested waters at that stage. Maybe he's being too lazy by not going there today. <laughs> One more. Yeah, well, actually, do the questions during the lunch break because um, it's easier for Albert to hear the question directly. Yeah, yeah. But I'd like to thank Adrian and Shane. It's hard for me to make I'd like to thank Adrian and Shane because it's been quite an effort to get uh, to get Albert down here for this conference. We have actually done a report, UFO Research Queensland has done a report, we are looking to see if we've got copies of it with us here, and they are, will be for sale in the library room. Okay, would you please thank uh, Alan for